We have our table sponsors out there, and I ask you all, when we break for lunch, to go by and just say hello to our table sponsors. And they include Rescue Houston, Shield Bear, Hope Rising, National Center for Sexual Exploitation, and Mayor Now. Great organizations. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to take a minute to point out this amazing resource. This is the Go Box that is put out by the Freedom Church Alliance. It is packed full of amazing resources for all ages. There is books, there is the DVD Nefarious from our film producer Benji Nolo, who will be taking the stage later today. This is being sold for 40 bucks, guys. So if you want to get this and equip your family and kind of have a guide to do that, as far as education and sex trafficking, I highly, highly recommend this resource. Okay, let's get started. So, let's begin with just a simple, basic definition of child sex trafficking. Sex trafficking is the recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, or obtaining of a person for the purpose of a commercial sex act, in which the commercial sex act is induced by Three words, force, fraud, or coercion. If the individual is under the age of 18, force, fraud, or coercion does not need to be proven. Human trafficking is the fastest growing criminal industry in the world today and is currently tied with the illegal arms trade as the second largest criminal industry. And Senator Cruz touched upon some of these numbers, but I want to go ahead and address this. 79,000 children in Texas are impacted. Those are just the reported cases. I personally predict that it is much, much higher than that. And combined labor trafficking and sex trafficking we are looking at approximately 313,000 victims in Texas alone. What is that costing us as taxpayers? What does this equate to in dollars and cents? $6.6 .6 billion. Do you know if we just took a fraction of that and invested in prevention, we would have a completely different set of numbers here. We are right now in the state of Texas in a reactive state instead of a proactive state. That's why we're seeing billions of dollars being spent on helping these victims recover. It can happen to anyone. You know, I've had many conversations with people over the last couple years, and they look at me like I'm speaking a foreign language. That's because people don't understand that sex trafficking is not just an international crime. It is not an inner city crime. This affects every one of us. It does not have anything to do with peer porn, peer, poor parenting or good parenting, being a Christian, being a Republican, being a Democrat. This crosses all boundaries and is right here in our community. The target age, most common, is 12 to 14 years old. Four out of five victims are female, and one in five are male. And half of all victims are children. So Senator Cruz touched upon this quite a bit with the internet. I want to see a show of hands in here who who has children in here that have an Instagram account? Instagram. Show of hands. Okay. So you're going to really want to listen to this part. The Polaris Project, first of all, says the Internet is the number one platform for solicitation of prostitution. 
That's why it was so important to get SESTA FOSTA passed, which, guess what happened? It drove the predators to the sites that your kids are on every day. Instagram being one big one. I had a recent conversation with law enforcement and they let me know that they are watching these accounts. They are, you know, posing as kids in some of the accounts, some of the apps that, you're, that your children are involved in. And they are seeing a very sharp increase in predatory behavior on these apps because the big ones like Backpage have been taken down. It is so incredibly important that you know what is going on on your children's device. Next, nearly three quarters of sex trafficking survivors were advertised on Backpage and Craigslist. That's why it was so important to disable those websites. This is shocking to me. Across the United States, one in 20 men have purchased sex online. In Houston, it's one in five. One in five in Houston. Let's talk about international trafficking versus domestic. International trafficking is mostly the brothels. Okay, I've lived in Cinco Ranch for many years. I've raised my kids in Cinco Ranch, but I had the opportunity to take a tour with Elijah Rising, and they take you on a van tour, and they pull right up to the brothels. On Mason Road and Fry Road in Katy, 14 brothels in Katy, Texas. 14 international girls. Between 14,500 and 17,500 women, children, are brought into our country for the purpose of being trafficked. Domestic trafficking, 300,000 teens are suspected of being trafficked each year. 300,000. I personally believe that the number is much higher. Okay, take a look at this screen. Okay, we got a soccer mom there, we got a soldier, we got a cute cheerleader. We got some guys here looking a little shady. Who thinks maybe one of the guys up on the top were convicted of trafficking? Who's the pimp? Who's the pimp on this screen? Anybody want to guess? The lady on the bottom left. Okay. Or the man. Anybody else want to take a guess? Who's who's the pimp on the screen? Cheerleader. Cheerleader? All of them. Okay. The answer is all of them. Every one of these individuals have been convicted of trafficking. The nice looking soccer mom that you could be sitting next to on a field next weekend, she was convicted of trafficking all three of her children. The cheerleader trafficked her cheer squad. The soldier was a buyer and he said, you know what? I think I can cash in and make some money on this. And he ultimately was convicted of child sex trafficking. The point in this screen is to hit home that if you're watching for the white man on the corner from the movie Taken, you are looking in the wrong place. Traffickers look just like anybody in this room. They look like you and me, and that's why this crime is so incredibly dangerous, because we cannot identify these predators because they blend into all of us. They're in our schools. I promise they're in our churches. They are walking among us. This is some of the best information right here. Y'all have notebooks. I highly recommend writing this down. This information is critical and it's spot on. This comes from John Clark and he talks about the six stages of recruitment. 
And when you understand these stages, you can be very effective at intervening when you see somebody you care about starting to display these behaviors. This is classic grooming and trafficking behaviors. Number one, befriend. Stage number one, befriend. Somebody comes up to your kid at school. Hey, hey, how are you doing? You know what? Yeah, you know what? We're having a party Saturday night. You want to hang out? I mean, you look so nice, and I see you down the hallway. I mean, I see you in science class. You know, hey, we're all just going to hang out. You want to join us? That first contact is very not threatening. But I promise you, your kid or the person being targeted has been pre-qualified as being vulnerable, and they, are, they have targeted them, and they're going to start that process. Number two, intoxicate. This is when the trafficker in introduces drugs or alcohol to your child, and it's possibly the first time your child's experimented, or there is an increase of accessibility in stage number two. It's about substance use. Stage number three, alienate. If you, your kid gets to this stage, you're in trouble. Your kid, who maybe grew up very stable, happy, loving, all of a sudden there's a huge division between your kid and you. There's a major wedge, and you don't understand it. You're looking at this perfectly stable, happy child, and they're rebellious, and they're, they're being disrespectful. The behavior is very, very different, and you, you look at them like, you know, you, you've lost your mind, right? And that's hard because you're like, okay, is my child being rebellious? Is my child just going through a stage, right? Because it's teenage years, expected. But stage three, you are in big trouble because it's about emotional control over your child. Number four, isolate. The kids that they used to hang out with that share their core values, all of a sudden, the trafficker's pulling them away from that core group. Maybe those friends would have said, hey, that's not cool. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be taking those kind of selfies. You don't want to be smoking weed. You know, so, and the, and the trafficker's like, oh, come, come hang out with us. Those people, they're too prudish. You don't even hang out with them. Come hang out with us. We're cool. So stage number four, they begin to now pull that child away from their normal peer group. Stage number five, desensitize. The things that your child considered to be morally correct, all of a sudden now their moral compass is completely gone haywire. They're desensitized. Maybe six months ago, they would have never smoked weed. They would have never taken a nude. They would have never, ever engaged in these behaviors. But they're at the stage now, based on the manipulation of the trafficker, that all that stuff is now considered normal. Stage number six, capitalize. This is when they take your kid. This is when they take your kid and they cash in. Very, very bad. This stuff, I'm telling you, can take to the bank. This is very classic. Cell phones, cell phones, wow. What a blessing social media is right now to our society. But I'm telling you, it is, it is the gateway to how many predators get to your kid. At least identify as a potential target. So a lot of these apps are, I'm sure, on your kid's phones. Kick. Kick, Whisper, Periscope. Some of these apps even have a GPS locator. So here's your kid, you know, just being, you know, a normal 13, 14-year-old teenager. But a person who's trying to get to your kid can actually do a locate on their, their location and get direct physical contact with your kid. Another one, you now, and of course, the big one, Snapchat. I was recently talking to a law enforcement officer who does a lot of stings with trafficking, and he said, quote unquote, Snapchat is the devil. <coughs> Very predatory. 
Now, as parents, we think, okay, why? Well, I'm going to be watching. I got passwords. I'm going to get into my kids' phone. I'm going to see the conversations. But see, traffickers are a step ahead of us. They have emojis. Look at these pictures. Every one of these pictures represents a message. So it's so important to be aware of the language, of the behaviors, because it can happen to you so fast and you can be in so deep before you really understand your child is in big trouble. If you suspect your child is being pursued online, you can certainly contact law enforcement, but understand when you contact law enforcement, if your child is engaging in criminal activity, that could put them at risk to be held accountable legally, okay? But if you, know, if you feel that your child's in danger, it's important to contact law enforcement if you feel there's evidence on that cell phone. You have to give law enforcement a consent to search if indeed you are the owner of that cell phone. And you need to have established probable cause. You can't go to law enforcement and say, you know what, I think my kid's misbehaving. I want you to do a forensic analysis on this phone. No, you have to have probable cause. Maybe your daughter's talking to a boy you don't like, and you want to bust her, and so you want law enforcement to check it out. That's not the reason to go to law, law enforcement for, with your kid's cell phone, okay? Ownership of the device is unknown. So this is a case where you maybe find a phone on your kid, and it doesn't belong to you, then they have to actually get a search warrant to investigate and look into that phone. Secure search warrant, retrieve data through a forensic analysis. This is interesting to know with an Apple device, it's very important that law enforcement get that phone if there's probable cause or there's illegal activity. And what they do is they put it in a tin can because that phone can be disabled from a remote location. So if the phone is caught with, the, with it open, then they can actually search it. But if that phone is shut down, you cannot call Apple, you cannot get that password. So they have to put in a tin can to protect a signal to come in and shut that phone down. So I researched a ton of parental apps. You know, there's so many out there. What apps are the best for you to have on your phone so you can monitor your kid's activity. So if you want to take pictures of these screens, I'm going to give you the top four that I believe are the best, the best quality, the best features. So Heister Mobile is the first one. So Heister Mobile has the capabilities, text, emails, chats, GPS, tracking, calls, retrieve, retrieve deleted information. That's important. It works with Android and Apple devices. Keep in mind some of these apps will only work with maybe one or the other. So it's important before you purchase one of these apps that you know that it will be compatible with your phone. Has a good star review. Net Nanny, this is really more for younger children, but there's capabilities to block pornography. There's capabilities to block, um, to block even uh, poor language, profanity, block pornography, time management. So you have the ability through this app to shut your kid's phone down maybe from 10 o'clock at night till 7 o'clock in the morning. So you can disable their phone during those hours. So net nanny, I highly recommend for younger kids. Custodio, this one is very strong. It's an Italian company. I was hoping they would come in for this seminar. They were very interested, but it's a long way away. But again, it blocks pornography, few social media activity, screen time limits, and also has a panic button. So in this case, your child has to know that this app has been installed on their phone. So they can use that panic button if they need to. And then the last one is MSpy. And this one I recommend as well. Keylogger is one feature on here. So you can, as you monitor your kid's phone, see every single keystroke that they make. Guys, we have to be in our kids' business. 
Because I'm telling you, traffickers are. Okay? Nuggets of wisdom. So many of you know me in here personally, but I'm here to say that my sweet daughter was pursued in Katie ISD High School. Varsity athlete, Christian girl, worked at Chick-fil-A. Great kid. I mean, great kid. But during her junior year of high school, she was approached by a basketball player. Just like that number one, befriend. And he's like, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you come over here and hang out with us? Okay? Cinco Ranch High School, guys. Right down the road. We've been in Cinco Ranch for 22 years. First point of contact was inside her high school by a peer, basketball player, and that's where our story began. But these are the things that I want to share with you that can hopefully prevent you from going through some of the things that we went through. Because I didn't understand those six stages. I didn't understand anything about this at all. But my background is in juvenile justice. I've worked with some amazing kids in Harris County Juvenile Probation Department. I've worked with gang members. I've worked with some kids with some pretty risky behavior. But even with my knowledge of that, I had no clue whatsoever about this crime. And I want to just take a second. It means so much to me. One of my students is in the house. Uh, he was in my program probably four years ago. And I am so proud, so proud of him because this is a classic story of restoration and hope. Anthony, can you please stand, please? Give him a round of applause. <laughs> know what your kids are doing and who they are talking to. This is basic 101. People are probably like, of course I know. But I'm going to tell you, you have to be like the FBI in your house. You have got to know who has entered your kid's life at school, through social media, because, you know, your kids have so many friends, right? They're making new friends daily when they're a teenager. It is so important for you to be engaged and for you to ask questions. If you see your kid is hanging around with somebody a little bit more, hey, I'd like to meet that person. You know, be in your kid's business. Talk to your kids about trafficking. Talk to them about trafficking. Now, if they're five years old, that's a different conversation, obviously, than if your kid is 15. But you need to have these conversations, guys. You need to talk to them about those six stages. Because, you know what? Did you remember that what that um, age, target age was? 12 to 14? Okay. A 12 to 14 year old kid cannot outsmart uh, a, a criminal that is looking to cash in on your kid. You have got to have these conversations with your child and let them know without instilling fear. Because I'm not about scaring the heck out of your kid, but empower your kid with the information so they can stay safe. Next, y'all, this is one that I can tell you we went through with our daughter. I, I said, my daughter would never sneak out, never. I mean, she was raised in a house where her mom worked in the juvenile justice system. Like I've talked to her about the dangers of a girl walking out the front door and being vulnerable. But I'm gonna tell you this, I was dead wrong. I was dead wrong. You have got to have your alarm activated. You have got to secure your house to ensure that your daughter or son is not being lured out of the house when you're sound asleep. That is a very big one, the sneaking out, very big. Arm your system and make sure that your child is where they're supposed to be. Frequently monitor, monitor social media. We talked about that, incredibly important. Okay, I, I see these conversations going on on Facebook between parents, oh, I don't get my kids' business. I mean, that's like an invasion of privacy. I'm not gonna get there. I mean, you know, my gosh, I mean, they're 17, you know, they're responsible. Oh, hello. 
get in their business. I am telling you right now, we are living in a society where you have to, you have to be on top of this. And so they don't listen to, because I've, I've heard this from my kids, and my son is here somewhere, you're the only mother out there that wants her password. I said, okay, whatever, so I'm the only mother. Too bad, so sad. I will be in your business. Your child, if your child has experienced a traumatic event, traumatic event, which can be, unfortunately, a sexual assault, I believe one in four girls before the age of 18 will experience this. Maybe divorce parents, maybe a moving of the, the home, death of a friend or a loved one, some kind of trauma can trigger a vulnerable, very vulnerable situation. If your child has experienced a traumatic event, it's very, very important to see a trauma-informed counselor. Our daughter went through some trauma, and we did what most good parents would do. We took her to a Christian counselor. She needs more God in her life, right? We were, we were wrong. We needed to take her to a Christian counselor, but a counselor that specialized in trauma. Incredibly important because that is very, it's very, very directly connected to helping them understand that their brain is on fire when they experience trauma. So taking them to their school counselor or to your Christian counselor or to your pastor is not going to heal what is broken from that trauma. Brainwashing grooming, it is the loss of emotional control. Your child has been brainwashed and it is absolutely devastating and very difficult to get them back on track when they have been manipulated emotionally and they are under the control of somebody who's exploiting them. Grooming can start at 17. There's a lot of families that I talk to uh, and many times during their 17th year, they are being groomed because that trafficker knows when they turn 18, parents have lost control. I have had so many situations where the child literally is gone one week after they turn 18. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, then you have a very, very tough battle. To regain parental control after 18, they almost have to be carrying a weapon and be like schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to maintain or regain control of them after they are 18. Traffickers monitor counseling offices. If they're looking for somebody who's vulnerable, they'll sit outside the counseling office and watch who's coming and going and saying, they've already got one foot in the door. This is how strategic these people are to get your kid. Parents, you must communicate with each other. We found out later that a couple parents who my daughter was supposed to be with knew that my daughter did not show up and nobody called me oh, call me you will not offend me you will not hurt my feelings i will not say oh not my kid we cannot live like that guys we've got to support each other as parents and grandparents and we have got to pick up that phone because you know what that kid can be killed that kid can be taken over state lines lives destroyed forever talk talk, talk to each other. But don't approach somebody like, you know what, your kid is screwed up. You know, your kid, well, let me tell you what my kid's doing. You really need to go talk to them in truth and in love. Okay, very respectful. And a parent will thank you for that. We have to have all eyes on deck right now, guys, watching out for each other's kids. Okay, again, there's no privacy right now when it comes to your kids. Get in their business. It could save their life. And finally, to close, call to action. Chocolate for America is all about parents. When we had our very traumatic, horrible journey with our daughter, she was missing for 40 days. 
So we were clueless. I'm here to say we were grasping. We were exploited. People took money from us. A week at your kid, give us a lot of money, and we'll have her back in 72 hours. We were parents grasping for anything, and we made a lot of mistakes. Child Proof America is about parents' prevention and intervention. If you have a child that is gone and suspected of being trafficked, you can call us and we will assign a trained and vetted guide to you who will help you navigate law enforcement, who will help you navigate best resources. You need help. When you feel your kid is in danger, life or death, you can't think straight. You need somebody to come into your life and say, here is a path to lead you out of this nightmare. So that's what Child Proof of America is about. Parents, so our Family Guides program is one of our major initiatives. And our e-learning parent curriculum, which was mentioned earlier, Debbie mentioned it. We are going to do a curriculum that's gonna be made into a video that we anticipate to reach five million parents, two languages nationwide, all free to the public. That's our e-learning curriculum. If you choose to support Child Proof America, fantastic information in your bag. This is not about a fundraising event today, but it is in my PowerPoint, so I've got to address it. In your on your seats, there are two pieces of colored paper. If you have a question throughout the day, because we're going to have a Q&A after each speaker, Please write your question on that piece of paper, and we will have volunteers, our wonderful volunteers in blue shirts, at the end of the hold your question up. They will pick up your question, they will deliver it to Debbie, and then Debbie will go ahead and she will read a couple questions, but y'all, we only have five minutes for each Q&A after each speaker, but at the end of the day, all of us will be on stage, and we will open it up to 30 minutes of Q&A. Ask your questions. No question is silly. No question is off limits. We're here to talk about some big issues today. Sex trafficking with kids. You know what? Let's get real and let's get our questions answered. Okay? All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.